Sony a7R. New, sleek, lightweight, luxurious. Is it as good as it's made out to be? I've been using this camera for a month so far, and these are my honest opinions. We start out with the buttons on the camera. The buttons are super solid and nicely mold to your hands. The camera has a fair decent amount of custom mobility. We have a nice swivelly mode dial in the front and back for changing the ISO and shutter speed. Also a nice metal swivelly mode dial for all your function needs. And if that's not enough, you have three customizable buttons that can be changed in the menu system. Left and right stereo microphones built right into the camera, surprisingly good, great sound quality. On the right side of the camera we have a mic input, headphone jack, a micro HDMI slot capable of projecting uncompressed 4K resolution for viewing your still images on a 4K TV. Really don't find much use for this, but it's a nice feature to have. And a charger port. And on the right we have one SD card slot and a movie button. Here's the EVF on the Sony, the 2.4 million dot XGA OLED True Finder, Sony calls it. As you can see, information shows at the top and bottom. Um, there are some problems with this EVF that can be a killer or a seller. But it is a beautiful viewfinder for what it is. And let's not forget what makes this camera so unique. It's its 36.3 megapixel full frame sensor built into a mirrorless body. The first and only of its kind available right now. And it's a damn good sensor at that. Yes, it's one sexy beast of a camera. But does it work as good as it looks? It has shutter speed up to one eight thousandth of a second, which is very surprising for a camera of this size. ISO down to 50, and ISO up to 25600. Its menu system is quite unique, like only Sony can do it. The menu is also available in live mode. And modes change by pressing the up button on the swivelly modo. Alright, this is what you've all been waiting for. The test results that uh, I've used so far in the Sony A7R. And um, I'll give you my complaints and give you some my thoughts about uh, this camera. So, here we go. Um, first to start off, um, I used my Super Takamar. This was taken on a 50mm f1.4 vintage lens of a bottle in New England snow. Now this is not a product plug for uh, Aquapana. Uh, this is just coincidental that I decided to take a picture of your bottle in the snow. Now to move on from this, um, this sensor has serious crop factor on it and it's white balance, it's auto white balance is spot on. Some of you like to use correction cards but um, it turns out perfect in the camera that sometimes I don't even need to use correction cards to correct it in third party. So here we go, coming up with the Mega Zoom. Three, two, one, bam! And that's not even it. You're prepared to be amazed. Three, two, one, bam! Look at that beautiful 36 megapixels at work. Here's another photo right here um, of a mailbox, and I've cropped it out at f1.4. The, the setting should be uh, right there for you to view. Um, bam! Look at that. Um, the megapixel. I know I don't crop personally. I don't like to crop and one of my favorite readers have told me not to crop but um Yes, fro I'm talking to you, but this just shows the power of the uh, sensor Okay, here we go with ISO ability of the sensor um, of course, it's 36 megapixels So I wasn't expecting it to be the most amazing thing But in my opinion, it's halfway decent Here's the ISO at 800, no noise really showing up yet. 
ISO 1600, we begin to see noise in the background. Um, 3200, uh, noise is starting to show up on the face and everywhere. And by 6400, noise is prominent throughout. And 25600 is beautiful. Here is the auto white balance test for the camera. It should be popping up in 3, 2. You see it? I'll show it again. Original, fixed. Can't even tell the difference. To be honest, this camera has the best auto white balance that I've seen from a camera I've used. I've used Nikon systems, Canon systems. Sony a7R is really, really, really accurate um, comparing colors. I mean, you could barely tell the difference. You have to really pixel peep to see it. And that's coming from a DSLR user. Um, I was actually quite surprised at how accurate mirrorless cameras can be at white balance and uh, the Sony a7R just seems to be really accurate. You don't really need to fix a lot of the shots you take. If you want it to be perfect, you can, but that's something to look forward to when buying this camera, that it can match colors pretty closely. Okay, just another random picture here just to show you the quality you're getting out of this uh, camera. Um, but I know what you've been waiting for and you want to hear the microphone quality and see the video, so here it is. The Sony A7R video test. Okay, short but sweet, but you get the point. Pretty decent there. Video quality and sound quality from that. I have to say better than Nikon cameras at this point. Um, you should be able to do a lot with this camera if you're in a video. The specs are also can go up to 60 FPS at 1080p. That's as high as you can go. And there's no raw format or anything like that, but um, it gets the job done. And also you get full manual control and video, which is a plus two. Okay, the sad part about this camera. <sighs> it's problems, and yes, it does have its share of problems. Let's go over some of the uh, physical problems of the camera. Okay, let's start with the shutter. The shutter button, um, there is no click on the shutter. So a lot of times when you're trying to autofocus, you might actually accidentally take a picture. Now, if you take a picture under one two hundredths of a second, because it the Sony a7R doesn't have electronic first curtain shutter, the whole camera vibrates, causing shutter blur. More showing up on longer lenses past like 200 millimeters. But this is a huge problem, and quite frankly, it's one of the reasons why I sold it, uh, my camera, was because this, I just think that the shutter blur, especially when you're doing astrophotography on a telescope, it was just unacceptable. It was completely blurring the skies. I couldn't get a still image. I mean, part of the reason... It is like this is because it's it's such a lightweight camera and it's a full frame session, so it's going to pick up a lot of more detail. And um, if Sony decided to put a electronic first curtain shutter, it probably would have brought up the price to around twenty eight hundred dollars, which some people would have been willing to pay if it didn't have this problem. But th I guess they wanted to keep the price down and sacrifice. Now there are two fixes for this, right? 
you can either buy a $400 Sony battery grip or you can build your own at the bottom. And it has to be 25 kilograms, which is almost adding three pounds to the camera. Now, this was just three pounds to the camera. I mean, it wasn't the point of buying the uh, Sony a7R to have it light. Now, nobody knows if they'll be able to fix this problem with a update, firmware update, by changing the timing of when the shutter goes off. But for now, they haven't, and they haven't really admitted that this problem exists. Okay, so the last design flaw of this is the AVF. Here is what I wish Sony would fix, as you can see. With the, when you turn the live effect off, right, you'd expect that the viewfinder would act like a normal viewfinder, but what it's doing is it always tries to keep the same light. Look, whenever you try to change it. Now, if you turn this setting off, I'd expect that if it's dark, it, it will be dark in the viewfinder. What you see is what you get, but not in this case. And because of this, it lags in low light because it's always trying to keep the same brightness. Um, I guess too much processing power, I don't know what, but um, it's unusable in low light. Now, I've become aware that this problem isn't only for the Sony A7R. It's all EVFs have this problem in any camera, no matter what setting you put it on, unfortunately. But the Sony's is actually particularly bad. And because of this, unfortunately, this camera is completely unusable in low light. When you're doing astrophotography, you can barely see stars. The lag in the viewfinder in low light is just ridiculous. The whole thing goes, skips frames, probably 10 frames per second in low light. It's really ridiculous. If you're going to be taking uh, low light shots, this is not the camera for you. The Sony A7 series, I'd like to call a good experimental backup camera. It has its fair share of problems, but I do give props to Sony for having the guts to release a camera that's the first of its kind. Sony really didn't know what to do, seeing that there are no other cameras of this kind, so they sort of went with it. I call it good, not great. I hope Sony continues its innovation, and I'm more excited about the next generation of this camera. Overall, it was a fun camera to try out, but the camera won't suit everyone's needs. Too much sacrifice for the price? Kind of, but an interesting product at that. I am interested to see what Sony does in the future of photography. If they're going to continue down the full frame mirrorless path or abandon this side project. Well, that was it, and you know you're getting the photo truth from me. I'm your host, Ben Kleshinsky. Thanks for watching.